watching uh, victim impact statements at the sentencing hearing for Kara Rintala. It is the body in the basement murder trial. The daughter of Rintala and the victim asked the judge for her mother's immediate release. Let's listen. Hi, I am Kara Rintala's daughter. I am 16 years old and was adopted by her and Ann Cochran when I was a baby. I am asking you to release my mom immediately so we can be together. I need my mom. This case started when I was very young. I do not remember my mother met Anne at all. The only mother I have ever remembered is Kara. I remember the first time she was taken away. As a young child, I didn't fully understand what had happened. But when my grandma Sandy explained that my mom was in jail, I started to cry and my heart broke. I went through days and nights crying and missing my mom. To this day, every time I'm separated and is away from my mom, I feel the same heartbreak all over again. When my mom was taken away from me, I began living with my grandparents in Narragansett, Rhode Island, where I still live today. My mom and grandparents did whatever they could to let me spend time together with my mom. My grandparents brought me to see my mom in jail. Also, she called me on the phone all of the time and sent me lots of letters. After my mom's second trial, she was released from jail and she had to live in Massachusetts. She was not allowed to live with me and my grandparents in Rhode Island, so my grandparents brought me to visit her every weekend during school vacations. I knew I still needed to see her and would have been very upset if I did not get to visit her every weekend. After my mom's third trial, she was taken away from me again for five years. Again, this broke my heart and caused the same painful feelings that I had when she was first taken away. But again, just like the first time, my grandparents still drove me down to Massachusetts to visit her in prison every weekend and on school vacations. My mom wrote me lots of letters every single week for five years, and I remember she would mail cards with special notes in them every week and made sure I received them. I loved them. On my birthday and special holidays, my mom would wrap and send gifts to the house and would call so I could open my gifts with her so it would feel like we were together again. The next time my mom was released from prison, she was finally allowed to live with me and my grandparents in Rhode Island. This wasn't very important to me. I was able to live with my mom for the first time since it had been a little kid. We began spending every single day together. She made clear that spending as much time as possible with me was the most important thing to her. She drove me to school and picked me up every single day. I was a freshman in high school when my mom came home. After she came home, I made the honor roll for the first time, and I have done better in school since I have had my mom with me. Also, since my mom came home, I made the varsity volleyball team and the drag team. My mom has really supported me and given confidence to do that. When I was in school, my mom got a del delivering job for school for another school district. I know she did that so she was only working when I was in school. That way we could spend weekends and school vacations together. Once she took me camping on Cape Cod and another time she took me to Block Island. During our first summer together, we both volunteered at our church and summer camp together. And this past summer, I got a job as a busser at a local restaurant. She drove me from that job every day. At the same time my mom has been raising me, she has been helping me with my grandparents and to get along with them. They are getting old. They are both 80 now. And I am really scared if that my mom is taken away again. It will be really hard for all of us again. On October 5th, 2023, my mom was taken away from me one more time. Just like before, this broke my heart all over again. Every time she is taken away from me. Do you want to take a break? No, it's fine. Every time she is taken away from me, it feels like a piece of me is taken away from me as well. I want this pain to be over and I want my mom back for good. This case took my mom from me when I was about four years old and it has been a part of my life for 12 of the 16 years I've been alive. 
but it has not stopped my mom from caring and providing for me. And it has not stopped me from loving my mom. My mom, Kara, will always be the mom that I have known that will forever take care of me and that I will always love. Keeping my mom away from me has made my life very hard and caused me a lot of pain because the person who loves me the most in the world has not been able to be with me. She has been taken away from me for the majority of my life, and in the short time, my mom and I have been able to live together. We have had an unbreakable bond. Not being able to live with her breaks my heart. I cannot live without my mom. I need her. Having my mom back home means the world to me, and I am asking you to release my mom right away and let her live with me for good. Thank you. Oh, I hate listening to that. I uh, know. It's just always so hard to hear the impact these crimes have on everyone, the, the, the victims everywhere. Mm -hmm. And Marie Pereira, the, um, you know, the judge is not going to let her go. But it's another layer of, like Kelly said, the victims are scattered in crimes like this. Kelly is absolutely right because the victims are not just part of the actual victim's families. The defendant's family, this little girl is a victim too, with the my mom. But I have to say, let me put my independent legal analyst hat on, she really got on my nerves with that. An adult should have read that statement and said, can you say something about the person who was murdered? Mm. All she said was, my mom, mm. my mom, my mom, my mom. Could you stop for one minute, little girl, and figure out that your mom is going to jail because she murdered someone. She took the life of someone else's mom, that little adopted child. I think this victim from the defendant side is extremely selfish and like I said an adult should have told her and all of that you need to say you're sorry for what your mom did because at the end of the day the jurors spoke your mom is a convicted murderer so can you just be empathetic towards the other side I didn't like this victim impact this plaintiff's victim impact statement um, be this defendant, I'm so upset with the statement, it's making me talk out of pocket, but it was wrong. She needed to at least show some empathy for the dead person, and an adult should have told her that. You never know what Marie's gonna say. <laughs> That's what I love about But her. it's true, it's my mom, my mom, my mom. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a bit much, and you're right. I like the idea of a, an adult l proofreading that because it, it went on too long, um, in that th it was tone deaf, in that the reason they're there is because of the decision made by the jury. Uh, I mean, she could, Marie, and sure, she could have talked about, uh, you know, the victim in, the main victim yes. in this case. Definitely, regardless. Just back again, there's just these crimes, we see them happen time and time again. And obviously the judge has to come up with an appropriate sentence uh, for a situation like this. Like Ted said, he's not going to just let, let her mom just go. Um, you have to take into account what she did here. And there are consequences to people's actions. I, I do, I understand where the daughter is coming from. She is young. She, of course, is just, she's thinking about her life. She's, it seems like she's saying she can't even live yeah, without hard her, hard her, hard her mom. And so it's, it's horrific <laughs> to listen to, but Marie, I do understand your point, but maybe just talk about you know, what the judge has to take into consideration here. It has to take into consideration many factors in sentencing. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to have a pre- sentencing report read by the judge it's going to talk about you know a rehabilitation potential the seriousness of the crime the fact that she may not have any prior criminal history and again the rehabilitation factor is she a danger to society yeah. how much punishment should she get is going to count on all of those things her character before her character during and her propensity for violence if they let her out early and does she have any good value left in her that's what the judge is going to have to decide and uh 20 years or less yeah. maybe we don't know how it's going to come out well but certainly the victim's family is saying maximum time and of course the daughter is saying let my mom come home right now <laughs> Yeah. The uh, let's get a break. I want my let's mom find... to come home too, Maria. I gotta tell you. <laughs>